Hello, welcome, welcome. My name is Andrea, Andrea Griffiths. Um, I am super excited to be here today. I had the pleasure to visit Berlin during GitHub Satellite back in 2019. And it truly really was a fantastic experience. I fell in love with the culture, the tech, the sites. I very much look forward to going back one day. Um, so to me, it's uh, really um, a great privilege to be here today with all of you. I know you had a long day of talks, so I hope that you hang in there with me and I'm gonna make this as fun and interactive as possible for all of us. All right, so just a bit about myself. As mentioned, I am a senior product manager. I actually just recently uh, switched teams a couple of months ago, and I am now in product, which I absolutely adore. A um, couple of fun facts out of this uh, beautiful slide that has a ton of fun facts. I am from Colombia, South America, born and raised. I am a US Army veteran. I'm absolutely super fan of open source software, super fan of experimentation, of testing things, figuring out what works, what doesn't. Experimentation is 100% my jam. So um, I'm excited to talk to you about some um, ideas I've been, uh, I suppose, noodling and applying to my own practices. Um, this matters to me why. Well, I am 100% the product of community. Um, if it wasn't for open source software, if it wasn't for the opportunities that being part of vibrant open source software communities have provided me, I wouldn't have the pleasure of being here today with you. So um, it is important to me and I'm super excited to talk to you about two things that I'm super passionate about, um, two specific topics. One, of course, the power of open source and open source communities which fuel everything, the global economy, uh, the way we work, uh, companies like this one. So um, that's one. And second, of course, the um, undeniable value that a very well-structured, well-thought-out, nurturing community program and how it can exponentially improve not only the quality of your product, but also your user experience. But before we get started into this little journey, I want to share something with you. I hope my German there is okay. This is important. Um, I want to share with you a realization that has truly changed the way that I work. Uh, it took me many, many years. I won't age myself, <laughs> but um, I want to share it with you and all of you in the audience. So perhaps you don't have to wait as long as I did to figure this out. So just keep in mind throughout this conversation and throughout the days ahead that every single person in the audience watching this or watching a replay, um, you have the power. You are empowered at your company, regardless of your role, whether you work on sales or design or data science or analytics, whatever you do, you have the power to create meaningful interactions with your users, to create spaces for them to share their experiences with you. This is not a uh, you know, solo job. This is not only a function of DevRel or user researches or support community teams. This is a function that affects every single one of you. So regardless of your role, keep in mind, you can too be a disruptor. Disruptors are people just like you and me, and we can all provide uh, an opportunity to empower our users to advocate for them, to listen, to learn from them. And of course, to give back to the open source community for the better. So if you take nothing else today, please remember that you are a disruptor, so embrace that. All right, so let's get started. In Colombia, there is a saying, um, it's el que tiene tienda que la tienda. And roughly translates to basically, if you open up a shop, if you own a shop, um, you should look after it. There is a humongous misconception out there that all it takes for you to 
create, nurture, grow a community that's going to be productive and enhance your product and your user's experience is doing just that, creating a space, slapping on a Slack channel, Discord, Discord instance, whatever it is, and people will just flock to it. They will just come. And that's not necessarily the case. We're going back to the Tienda analogy. Um, you have to tend to it. You have to nurture it. You have to uh, engage with empathy. Um, building a community it is as much about driving the success of your business and the bottom line of your company, of course, as much as it is promoting and enabling your customers to be successful at using your product, at accomplishing what they're trying to do when they decided that your product, your feature, your research paper, that's what they wanted to invest their time in. So keep that in mind. This is true both for users of products as well as members of the open source community. And whether it be maintainers or contributors, um, you have to tend to your garden. So if you tiene tienda, que la tienda. And how do we do that? So the reality of it is that in the advent of COVID, um, we've been forced to work a bit differently now. The way that we engage our communities, be it open source communities or our communities of customers, is not the same and it shouldn't be. We, we can um, count on in-person events. We can count on those hotel lobby at conference interactions that sometimes spark the best ideas. No, we have to adapt. We have to adapt to the now. And we have to adapt to the fact that now more than ever, every company has been forced to become a software company. So regardless of what business you are in, um, to survive this pandemic and the constraints of it, um, you must have engaged into software uh, either creating a website or the way that you engage your customers, et cetera, even something as simple as selling your goods through um, a marketplace online. This means you are now a software company. Doesn't matter if you sell popsicles or if you are creating the next big software tool for developers. So what can we do? We can embrace this opportunity now. Um, with this challenge comes the opportunity that we can now reach a global audience and provide spaces for collaboration exponentially. Um, we're now more connected than ever. We're now seeing folks that maybe did not have the access and the know-how into technology um, learning, right? Um, I am equally shocked and pleased and surprised and also horrified at the fact that my mother is now in every single social media site um, and she actually knows how to use them. So um, that did not happen before COVID. So we need to adapt to the now and meet our users and our customers, meet our community where they are. Um, to do this, no better tools than open source. There's a million projects full of very nice and um, knowledgeable collaborators and maintainers that can empower you to do these things. Uh, whether it be collaboration tools, whether it be streaming tools like OBS, um, there is a tool, an open source that you can lean into to enhance the experience of your users and your communities. And I understand that this is not for everyone. Um, not all companies are supportive of embracing open source practices. Um, we're slowly catching on, but it's not a perfect scenario. So you don't have to dig in full on. You can just kind of dip your toes in the water so i want to share with you um on this little link here where it says um github.co so for slash bb buzz bb uzz1 it's a really interesting article published by github um, this research was done a couple of years ago and it actually explains to you and hopefully your decision makers um the beauty that it is adopting open source practices or starting with inner source to work better, to engage community, to grow, to scale, to make your product better. So keep these things in mind. We're going to adapt to the now. And adapting to the now, of course, includes harnessing that community power. Your business now, you as a individual contributor, as a freelancer, as an engineer, um, you have an incredible opportunity to deliver 
human authenticity, even through a medium like this, a conference online, um, you can bring that human touch to your product and you can help create that loyalty and goodwill that is so very easy to lose um, and so hard to really attain. So of course, this is not something that happens overnight. You can't just, again, open a shop and expect people to flock to it. So I'm gonna share with you a few things that I've uh, done in the past that I've been able to empower communities to lean to harness that power and to help improve the way that they interact, grow, scale their products. So let's take a look at what we can do to get there. So let's focus first of all in scaling and retention. Um, if you are in any kind of business, regardless of what it is, uh, you know that it costs a lot more to acquire a new customer, user, community member, contributor, however you want to call them, a new human that comes to use your product or that wants to bet on you. It's harder to acquire than it is to retain. So in order to retain our users, to keep our community members engaged, to keep those people who downloaded your product using it, um, we have to build a strong culture. And you very much can begin today to start doing this shift in culture. Um, you can do that and all of these things are going to lead into enabling for advocacy and not so much for customers. Eventually, of course, silver lining, they will become your customers. Um, but some of the ways that you can do this include, of course, listening is so important. Talk to maintainers, talk to contributors, talk to the person that just installed your application or just visited your website or subscribe to your newsletter. Talk to them, reach out, and then be quiet. Simply listen to their experience. Sometimes we are looking or working on a product for so long that we tend to lose sight about that user experience for a first time user or someone who is maybe not as technical as you are or doesn't understand the concepts because they're not as you know together in it as you have been. In order to do that and do it effectively, we need to do it with empathy. So don't make assumptions. Um, go into these conversations with an open mind and uh, keeping in mind that you're doing this because you want to listen and learn. Another thing that we can do, whether you are an individual or a company, is investing in research. And that doesn't mean uh, hiring a contractor, which anyways, if you're a contractor in this business, fantastic, we need you. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend uh, thousands of uh, dollars and resources into doing user research. Something like sending out a tweet asking a question about your product, that's user research. Answering a question on a community forum, like GitHub.community or Stack Overflow or Reddit um, or your own forum if you have it, that's user research. So lean into these practices and encourage everyone in your organization to also adopt them. Uh, sometimes it's a bit of a hard sell to get folks to get excited about doing this type of extra. Um, but I promise you, when you give that white glove treatment to your users, when you focus on those customer stories, when you inspire, you build those relationships, um, you're gonna be on the right track to create some fierce, fierce, loyal users. And so what happens when we apply all of these things? Well, it's really exciting because we are now at the level of authenticity at a scale. And what does that mean? Of course, if I answer a question to you via a personal message, um, that might have answered your question. You now have the answer you needed. If I answer your question in a public forum, um, now I help countless individuals who might have the same question. So keep that in mind. That is a good way to scale practices um, when it comes to either updates to your product or just user research, figuring out what's working, what's not. When you do these things, you focus on nurturing your users. It's authentic. You earn their loyalty. And so you and this user-obsessed culture helps us create user advocates. So what happens then? Um, you have your users and they love everything you're doing. They love how responsive you are. They become your fans, they become your advocates. And then ultimately, um, the true north, they become your user advocates. They become the folks that are 
talking about your product. They're sharing it on their social channels. They're advocating to the decision makers of their company to purchase your goods, to purchase your platforms, because that is the product where they feel they've been treated the most authentically and they're the most invested. And this is also true to open source projects, right? So if there is an open source project that you think, wow, this could really improve our product, or maybe we should try and utilize it for, I don't know, scaling our applications, invest in it with an authentic entry level and i guarantee eventually you will gain um that user advocacy and that user obsessed culture here comes my heart one more time so we remember and of course doing all these things sounds fantastic andrea i love that yeah let's let's go for it let's um become community people again this is everyone's job not just your devrel team or your support team but it's a hard sell right um so i want to share a few pointers for you to enhance um the messaging of value proposition for folks in your companies or for your partners who might not be so much into sold into these extra efforts that come with community building and nurturing so Remember, you have a unique opportunity to harness your users' talents. What does that mean? That means in your community, there are people that maybe they are not equally expert on your product. Maybe they are even more expert in your product than you are yourself. Um, they have infinite talent and potential. And when you nurture those relationships, you're going to enhance the overall customer experience. So what does that bring to a value uh, point of view for your organization? It brings a higher engagement. It brings um, better feedback, better actionable feedback that you can then apply to your products. Uh, that higher quality engagement is going to help your product grow, improve the overall customer experience. So creating these spaces, nurturing this community is going to be a fantastic way to you know support your users um, and not just lean on to the traditional support paths and there are many many um across organizations that you have a value add by being a community-minded person open source minded person and what do i mean by that this is the job of everyone and the value proposition affects everyone from sales and um, because again that can be a huge business differentiator. If I am looking for a product where I'm a gigantic company or a startup, and I find a product, of course, this is a personal take, that has a really strong community support or leans into an open source project that has a fantastic welcoming um, community, I probably lean more towards using that versus one that is entirely business to business why because i know if there is an issue there will be more eyes than those of the developers who are developing the product so i know i can reach them directly and provide feedback for my particular use cases so for sales you will sell more uh, for users of sex of course less attrition sometimes we lose customers and users of our products to things that are so just elemental in a simple email a simple message on a forum um, could help us retain that customer. So again, it costs a lot more to get a new one. So let's invest in retaining the ones that we have. Let's reduce that churn. Um, and then for product and product people like myself, what an incredible opportunity you have to listen to your users, gather that feedback, and actually put it to action. Actually do the things that your users are asking for that doesn't mean you're going to take every single suggestion from the community and apply it to your product of course but this will really enhance the scope in which you're looking at your roadmap and the decision making process and when you are prioritizing so product teams you're also winning where your community and open source minded and finally for marketing i mean this is doing the job of a thousand marketers right um word of mouth is the best advertisement um I, you know when you have a recommendation from a peer you take it maybe a bit more to heart than you would if it's something that you just found in a random uh google search so i want to talk to you a little bit more from the product perspective about adoption and this is a very oldie but goodie 
and it's called um, the pirate metric theory. It's called that because um, if you spell it phonetically, it sounds R. Well, this was uh, created by a gentleman who's much smarter than I am, Dave McClure. And basically, he wanted to focus the way that uh, young companies and startups were just prioritizing their efforts, figuring out what metrics to look at when it came to engagement, when it came to adoption, when it came to revenue and product. Um, I very much appreciate this as a product person myself. Um, because it leans heavily on data. And when you lean on data, the numbers don't lie. You're able to take a look at your metrics for awareness, acquisition, activation, retention, referrals, revenue. And then you can take all of this quantitative data and apply it to a way that would enhance the experience of your users or would increase your awareness um, or would help you retain folks using your platform, et cetera. So, Please take a look at that. Even if you are not a product person, this is a really, really good way to take a look at what metrics matter and what you should be looking at when you're having these interactions. It helps you lean into those community um, opportunities very well. So there's a short link there, github.co forward slash pirate. Um, actually, the folks at Headway did a really cool YouTube video explaining this principle. They are <laughs> pirate metrics. And um, I recommend you watch it so that you can learn a bit more about how to and what measuring um, matters when it comes to community. Okay, and let's see. Again, cross-organizational proposition. I think I went forward, let's go back. Um, we can also not forget about open source. Let's not forget about fostering that obsession, giving back, back to the open source community. Um, and I like to think about it uh, with something that is called the uh, servant mind, the servant mindset. Um, you know, a lot of companies talked about uh, contributing to open source or sustainability of open source or um, helping open source projects. And it is very talked about, it's very promoted, uh, lots of buzzwords, right? Um, but you need to really take a moment to stop and conscientiously examine exactly what you as an individual or your company, uh, what are you doing to ensure the supportability of the projects that your product is using or the ones that you're using yourself? What are you doing? Are you contributing? If you're not, what's keeping you from doing it? Um, let's look at it from the servant's point of view. And I love this definition because um, it, it's full of humility. It's full of empowerment, uplifting. Um, servant leadership means that my motivations, what's important to me, yes, it matters, but it's really not as important as the scale, right? So uh, not just helping one person, but helping thousands. And the beauty of open source is that we can all contribute. We can all be part of these wonderful communities and we can all help each other get where we need to go. So take a moment to reflect on what you're doing. And I encourage everyone to get started if they are not. And once we do a few of the things that I've mentioned, we're going to hit a point where we start thinking, well, Am I doing this right? Does that mean now that I have a successful community? Does that mean now that I am in a modern community? Um, and one of the ways that you can really evaluate this, of course, the adoption of metrics, fantastic. You can take a look at uh, the ARP um, theories and pick the evaluation metrics that matter to you, that matter to your organization. Uh, but at a more high level, really, the simplest way is to take a look at your user success currency. And what does that mean? You know, the currency of your users that you have, that you can gain is their trust. When someone downloads your platform, your app, when someone contributes to your project, they are setting up their trust in you, in your abilities, in your product. And that trust is absolutely priceless currency. If you have, uh, increase engagement. If you have lots of adoption, that means you have trust. So, hey, success currency. User love, of course. Yes, I am telling all my friends, I'm telling my colleagues, hey, come check out this product. This is great. The community is friendly. Um, there are many ways that I can provide feedback. 
um, they are actually engaging in authentic ways. It isn't a one-way street. They're listening. They're giving back. And all of this is going to lead to that fierce loyalty that we all want. Um, I think um, anyone that takes pride in the work really finds that rewarding when they feel like their product is beloved and that you have people who really depend on it because they they understand that um, it is the best solution for them, right? So um, keep in mind this uh, currencies, which might not be tied to metrics, um, there might be a bit more high level and altruistic, but I think that they can work for you as well. So let's go ahead and start wrapping it up. And I apologize, I went a bit over time here. To get to the point of the new community, just some key points to remember. Um, I want you to be a, a little bit like that um, fella in the graphic who is kind of holding up the open source or logo. And just this is where a bit of the heavy lift and happens, right? This is when you need to really reflect on the things that matter, what's important. So remember, each person you're watching, you have the power to nurture. You have the power to engage your community in a positive way. You have the power to listen. You have the power to surprise and delight your users. Um, I constantly tell folks when I either attend the meetup or uh, I'm invited to an, a speaking event or engagement that whether there is one person showing up or a thousand, if you invite me, I'm going to come. I'm going to show up and I'm going to answer and I'm going to be there for you. It's my personality, but I think it's so important. You have an opportunity to really delight users, to really have those personal connections. And it's not um, a one way street. It's not for them only. I also gained so much knowledge um, and just so many incredible experiences from the times that I really lean into community. Of course, open source community, incredibly important. Again, take a moment to examine what are you doing to give back? What can you do as a company? Um, if you were thinking of, hey, I don't necessarily know how to or what can I do to get started? I'm always open to a chat um, and I'll pass my social phone in a moment. Of course, scaling engagement is going to help us scale your product. Your product is going to be better. Ultimately, it's going to optimize it and bring that business value. And hopefully, the um, dollar, pounds, whatever currency sign uh, beyond that user loyalty, which I think is um, even more valuable, in my opinion. <laughs> All right. So um, again, quick tip. Don't forget, you are a disruptor. Disruptors are people just like you and me. So don't be afraid to engage with your users. Don't be afraid to answer questions. Don't be afraid to listen. Um, I just really, really want you to remember that. That's why is there once again. And I am available on Twitter, I'm a la Colombia on Twitter. Um, please feel free to DM me. My DMs are open. Uh, I might not answer right away, but I will answer. Happy to talk to you about anything open source, anything open source sustainability, about the sponsors program, about the GitHub Stars program, um, about GitHub's efforts in community building and the community forum, and what we do at DevRel. So don't be shy, reach out. I'll be happy to connect with everyone. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the very talented Carlo Yamar, who is my partner in crime and just helps transform these ideas into the beautiful illustrations that you've seen. Um, I think that is about it for my talk. 